Shopping and dining over Thanksgiving and maybe watching some football games, big government Republicans and Democrats were busy shredding the last vestiges of the Constitution. They're talking about inserting the army into domestic law enforcement. Senator Lindsey Graham, who supports this bill, says, quote, the homeland is part of the battlefield and people can be held without trial, whether an American citizen or not. I, Barack Hussein Obama, do solemnly swear to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. The original Constitution, I think it is an imperfect document, and I think it is a document that reflects uh, some deep flaws uh, in uh, American culture, the colonial culture nascent at that time. I think we can say that uh, uh, the Constitution reflected a enormous blind spot in this culture and that the framers uh, had that same blind spot. It also uh, re reflected the fundamental flaw of this country that continues to this day. Senate will pass tomorrow a bill allowing the American military to imprison American citizens indefinitely without charge or trial. Congress is essentially authorizing the indefinite imprisonment of American citizens without charge or trial. I think that denigrates the very foundation of this country. It denigrates the Bill of Rights. It denigrates what our founders intended. How bad is this? Uh, it's quite frankly absurd, Keith. I mean, here we are, 10 years after 9-11, in the wake of the demise of Osama bin Laden, the only leader that Al-Qaeda has ever known, and we're passing a provision that would codify the indefinite detention without trial of suspected enemies of the state. And that includes, as you mentioned, American citizens apprehended here on U.S. soil. We have not codified indefinite detention without trial since the McCarthy era. That's how extreme this is. And the most amazing thing is that it's not necessary. Charles Dyer, uh, I'm an Oath Keeper. I'm the first Light Armored Reconnaissance Battalion out of uh, Camp Pendleton, California. I absolutely could not, I, I can't imagine that we're living in the times where I have to worry about having to confiscate the weapons from the American people. Is that freedom? It's absolutely not freedom. Uh, that I have to worry that we're going to quarantine a, a, a city for uh, the purposes of, of, of keeping them in their hostage, like Katrina? Absolutely not. That's not freedom in any way that you can think of it. Uh, I'm almost speechless whenever I try to talk about this because I, I can't imagine that we're living in this kind of time. It, it really bothers me. Absolutely. I saw a, a tremendous pattern of, a, of the growth of the infrastructure of a totalitarian state in the last eight years post 9-11. I mean, it's been going on for decades. We've, we've seen for decades encroachments on our liberties, and then a crisis would come along, and then all of a sudden they had a chance to, to uh, get their policies passed they've been wanting to pass for a long time. If you need a painted picture of what is happening in this country, let's recognize how history repeats itself. In February 1933, Hitler staged a false flag attack, burning down his own German parliament building, the Reichstag, and blamed it on communist terrorists. In the next few weeks, he passed the Enabling Act, which completely eradicated the German constitution, destroying people's liberties. He then led a series of preemptive wars, all justified to the German people as necessary to maintaining homeland security.
am Schicksal des Kommunismus und der sich mit ihm verbrüdenden anderen Organisationen ändert dies nicht. Our enemy is a radical network of terrorists and every government that supports them. It's time to wake up. family was awakened in the middle of the night by a team of federal officers. Well, that's exactly what happened to a woman and her children in Granville County. Amanda Lamb is in the newsroom joining us now. And Amanda, we understand that because this case falls under the Patriot Act, a lot of the usual rights for defendants not available here. Her son was taken into federal custody two months ago. She can't get him out and she can't get any answers. 16-year-old Ashton Lundeby's bedroom is nothing if not patriotic. American flags everywhere. But according to the United States government, this 10th grader who has never been in trouble with the law before is now a suspected terrorist. My topic for this evening is now is assassinations. What have we allowed ourselves to become? Are we no longer a nation of laws? Have we become instead a nation of men who make secret arrests? Are secret prisons now simply another tool of the federal government law enforcement? Is secret rendition of individuals now permitted out of misplaced fear? Have we decided that the writ of habeas corpus is not worth defending? Is torture now an acceptable tool for making us safe? Unfortunately, the single answer to all of these questions from the leaders of our country and to many of our citizens appears to be yes. And now we are told that assassination of foreigners as well as American citizens is legitimate and necessary to provide security for our people. It is my firm opinion that nothing could be further from the truth. Secret arrests, secret renditions, torture, and assassinations are illegal under both domestic and international law. These activities should be anathema to the citizens of a constitutional republic. The real threat doesn't arise from our failure to torture, rather desensitizing our nation to the willful neglect and sacrifice of our civil liberties fought and died for over the centuries is the threat. The concept of habeas corpus existed even before King John of England was forced in 1215 by his rebellious barons to sign the Magna Carta. This basic principle and expression of individual liberty which has survived 800 years greatly influenced the writing of our constitution and our common law heritage. Today we hardly hear a whimper either from the American people or a stone silent U.S. government as our cherished liberties are eradicated. Instead, we have a government that deliberately orchestrates needless fear and makes people insecure enough to ignore the reality of their lost liberties. It should not be that difficult to distinguish the difference between the danger posed by the underwear bomber and the danger posed by a government that endorses secret prisons, torture, and assassinating American citizens. 